Hello Guardians, Mr. Armageddon here. Is your greatest joy in life the complete domination of your enemies and the subjugation of their zone? Do you enjoy dropping a fat bubble then loudly declaring that daddy's home? Well then it sounds like Void Titan might be right up your alley. Introducing the Sentinel, the perfect subclass for zone control, objective mode domination and enemy frustration. And today I'm going to show you the best aspects, fragments, abilities, exotics and weapons to turn yourself into the king of the hill. Alright, so settle this debate for me real quick. Do you guys know who the girl on my thumbnail is? Chat is telling me she's super famous, but I actually think that most people probably won't have any idea. So tell you what, do me a solid and drop a like or leave a comment down below if you actually know where she's from. Okay, so Void Titan has three aspects from which you can equip to Bastion, Offensive Bulwark, and Control Demolition. All three aspects are viable in PvP for different reasons, with Bastion being mandatory, and then choosing between Offensive Bulwark and Control Demolition as a matter of preference. The Bastion aspect means that casting your barricade gives overshield to yourself and nearby allies. And the barricade is also empowered, which means that it can slowly regenerate the overshield of yourself and allies standing behind it. Bastion also grants an overshield to nearby allies when you pop your super. When you think Void Titan, this is pretty much what you associate with it. The seemingly endless Void Purple overshield. Now, at first glance, you might think to yourself, well, it's only a 45 HP overshield. Why is everyone claiming it's OP? See, here's the thing, it's not necessarily about how much HP it is, so much as how it affects certain time to kill breakpoints. A 45 HP overshield means that it's impossible for any 140 RPM hand cannon to 3 tap you, and for example, all aggressive SMGs now need an extra 2 bullets to kill you, while high impact pulse rifles can no longer 2 burst you. This is why playing against Void Titan can feel so oppressive sometimes, because the overshield basically acts as a damage nerf to all of your weapons. But perhaps the most busted part of this aspect is the fact that popping a barricade gives that overshield not just to you but also to nearby allies. So not only do you get to benefit from the Void Titan kit but literally everyone within a city block of you can too. Used effectively the Bastion Barricade basically takes the best utility from normal barricades and the Warlock Healing Rift making it an absolute cinch to capture zones play objectives, get reses, secure heavy, and more. In other words, the overshield is very much the centerpiece of the Void Titan kit. And you might be thinking, well, that's a very juiced kit, but wait there's more. Not only does the overshield provide the obvious utility of effectively having extra HP that you can regen by sitting behind that barricade, having an overshield also confers benefits to ability regeneration, melee damage and reach when you use the next aspect, Offensive Bulwark. Offensive Bulwark means that while you have an overshield or inside a War of Dawn, your grenade charge is significantly faster, you have increased melee range and damage, and melee final blows also extend the duration of your overshield. This aspect aspect speaks for itself, but there's a few things you might not realize. This aspect's benefits will proc no matter how much overshield you have. You can have 1 HP of overshield or max overshield and it operates the same way. And it procs no matter the source of your overshield. So imagine that you don't have your barricade available. If you're on a team with another Void Titan, you can just dip behind their barricade, take a sip of that purple drank, and you're good to go. Similarly, the overshield provided to you by Echo Vigilance also confers the same benefits. So after killing someone while low health, you now have extended melee range and damage for any nearby interlopers. Personally, I love how Bastion and Offensive Bulwark synergize together. It seems like a match made in heaven. But there's also the third aspect with a slightly niche application that you might also want to consider. The Control Demolition aspect means that hitting a target with a Void ability or Volatile Explosion makes them volatile, while further damage to a volatile target causes them to explode. Explosions grant you and nearby allies health when volatile targets explode near you. At first glance, this seems like more of a PvE aspect, except that it has a very niche use case in PvP. In short, controlled demolition allows you to use the void shoulder charge to get multi-kills and to potentially kill players sitting in wells and bubbles. Basically, if you hit someone with a shoulder charge, nearby targets are also affected by the volatile debuff. And if your first target is killed by that shoulder charge, then they explode and that explosion sets off a chain reaction among all of the volatile volatile targets nearby. That's why sometimes you'll see a Void Titan get multi-kills from just one melee. Also, if you hit someone in a well with a shoulder charge and make them volatile, if you can trigger the volatile explosion with further damage, say from a shotgun blast, you will trigger the volatile explosion and kill the person in the well. By the way, have you guys dropped a like, comment, and sub yet? I'm sitting here refreshing my YouTube dashboard. I'm feeling kind of lonely. Thanks guys.
All right, now speaking of melees, Void Titans can choose between two melees, Shield Bash and Shield Throw. For PvP, you 100% want to run the Shoulder Charge instead of the Shield Throw. Titan Shoulder Charges are quite possibly one of the most broken abilities in the game, with an astounding amount of utility. And let me tell you why. You can spam a shoulder charge when moving around the map, which makes you faster than virtually every subclass not named Dawnblade. As long as you don't hit a target, you can use shoulder charge infinitely. And from a tactical perspective, it's arguably better to use your melee as a movement tool 90% of the time and only use it as an actual melee when you absolutely have to. Not only does it let you traverse the map quickly, you can also use it similar to a Warlock Icarus Dash or Hunter Dodge. If you pre-charge the shoulder charge, you can literally slide into a lane, fire a shot and then just shoulder charge back to cover in one movement and you can do this infinitely throughout the game all it requires is a one second sprint pre-charge the shield bash in particular also brings added utility in the form of suppression this means that you can shoulder charge into an active super and suppress them so not only does it provide all the movement benefits you also have a free super suppression in your back pocket when you need it lastly the melee also functions as well a melee. The thing with shoulder charge is that the movement is so lightning fast that the netcode genuinely struggles to keep up with it. That's why when someone shoulder charges you, it almost looks like the animation is kind of glitching out. The most notable and irritating melee combo is of course the slide shotgun shoulder charge combo, which lets you secure a kill from seemingly absurd distances, only to get a free overshield after you get the kill. In short, all Titan Shoulder Charges are actually kind of nutty and provide stunning amounts of utility to the kit. So much so that it genuinely wouldn't surprise me if they get nerfed at some point in the future. Speaking of needing a nerf, if you're interested in another overpowered Titan build, don't forget to check out my Arc Titan video over here. Now, in terms of class ability, let me make it simple for you. 99% of the time, you'll want to run Towering Barricade when running Void Titan. Towering Barricade offers the most utility in terms of providing cover for rezzers, heavy pickups, zone captures, and more, all with the bonus of a regenerating overshield that the Bastion Aspect provides. As for grenades, I strongly recommend using either Spike Nades or Vortex Nades. Spike Nades output an absolutely insane amount of damage in a short time while still having a relatively short cooldown compared to the other Void Grenades. The only catch is that there is a slight learning curve because you have to work out how to properly angle the grenade on certain walls. But trust me, not only is it fun finding the perfect angle, once you get the hang of it, they become absolutely brutal. Vortex Grenades are more suitable for zone denial because of their large radius and continuous damage they're also easier to use in the sense that you can just point them at a given location and just throw them there the other great thing about the void vortex grenade is that it applies a suction effect which pulls guardians towards its center kind of like a black hole when used in close quarters this suction effect can actually really mess with the guardian's movement and will frequently result in a free kill for that reason alone. Lastly, there's also a good argument for running suppressor grenades that not only function like a classic grenade, as in, you know, you pull the pin and wait for the explosion, but also suppresses your opponents. Suppression means that affected opponents can't double jump or use their abilities or super, whereas anyone actually in super gets slammed out of their super. So with that being the case, having a grenade in your back pocket that can suppress supers is quite handy. The only big counterpoint is that roaming supers in general aren't that popular right now, and it's a lot harder to suppress a thunder crash or a nova bomb than it is to suppress say an arc strider so in my opinion in this meta i think spike nades and vortex grenades offer the most bang for buck in terms of super it's an easy one just run ward of dawn aka bubble destiny 2 pvp is leaning more and more into objective based game modes like zone trials and fortress and iron banner and bubble is an extremely fast charging super that also generates free orbs for your teammates to pick up which lets them charge their supers even faster for now supers like sentinel shield aren't valuable in terms of the utility because of their extended cooldowns but you know who knows in the future in terms of fragments this is what i recommend echo vigilance means that defeating a target while your shields are depleted grants you a temporary void overshield this is outrageously useful functioning as a mini one-eyed mask Plus, even one HP of Overshield still procs the benefits in the offensive bulwark aspect. Echo of Vigilance is a mandatory pickup. Echo of Leeching is mandatory also. Not only does it give you plus 10 resilience, it also starts health regeneration for you and nearby allies after a melee hit. This is unbelievably useful and comes into play constantly in PvP. Make sure to equip it. As for the last lot, it's kind of a matter of preference, so let me give you a couple of options. Echo of Dilation gives you enhanced radar while crouching, faster crouch walk speed, and also plus 10 to mobility and intellect. This fragment offers incredible bang for buck, and I do recommend it. 
Or you can run Echo of Expulsion, which means that Void Final Ability Blows cause targets to explode. If you're running Controlled Demolition, this is probably the aspect that you want to run. In other words, if you kill someone with any ability, there's a good chance that they'll explode and kill everyone around them. Highly recommended as you'll net a surprising amount of collateral kills from this. Just quickly, if you guys are finding this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, comment, and maybe even sub if you want to see more content from me. It's a free way of supporting the channel, and I genuinely appreciate it as a small creator. Now, in terms of exotics, you actually have an abundance of options, so much so that I'll cover them all briefly because otherwise I'd literally have to do another video just on Titan exotics alone. Firstly, you have what I would call your hard meta options, that being June marches for the increased sprint speed, slide distance, and lightning chain off melee hits, and peacekeepers that basically turn you into Superman when using SMGs. Faster handling, auto loading, and all the same speed buffs as June's, but with additional strafe speed. You simply can't go wrong with Junes or PKs in this meta. Next up, we have what I call fringe meta options, which include Antaeus Wards, which gives you an invulnerability shield when sliding after sprinting for a short duration. This shield reflects your enemy attacks back at them. It's basically the No You exotic, which I cover more in depth in my Behemoth video, which you can find over here. And then you've got Syntheseps, which provides increased melee range, kind of like having knockout melee range 24-7 and it also increases melee damage when around three or more enemies, enough to be able to just one bang people with your normal melee attack. Most notably, this also lets shoulder charge one hit kill if you push into three enemies. For all the Warlock, Ophidian mains who are about to lose their melee range next season, well, here's an alternative if you can't bear to part with that melee lunch. Lastly, you have what I'd call your sleeper pick which in this case is the Crest of Alpha Loopy. Alpha Loopy is basically Wormhusk Crown for Titans. When you pop Barricade, you get a big chunk of health back for free. Now here's the thing, Alpha Loopy gives you health back, but not shields. But when paired with the Bastion Barricades, the effects actually stack, meaning you get the Alpha Loopy health boost and then the 45 HP overshield from the Barricade. In other words, you get upwards of 100 total HP every single time you pop a Barricade. But wait, there's more. All of the benefits I just listed, they also apply to nearby allies, meaning everyone gets a 100 HP boost every time you pop a barricade. Crazy, huh? And of course, it also gives you that extra orb when you pop bubble, which is a nice bonus. In terms of weapons, basically anything works, but in the current sandbox, the most meta options are always gonna be SMGs, pulse rifles, and hand cannons if you're more experienced. For special weapons, snipers and shotguns are great, but I am loving rapid fire fusions at the moment, like iterative loop, or if you're lucky, a god roll Cartesian coordinate. And that's because when you use a fusion rifle, you'll often take a bit of damage as you finish blowing your load, which frequently procs echo vigilance, giving you a free overshield for the next engagement. In terms of stat splits, ideally you're gonna want 100 resilience, 100 recovery, with discipline and strength, kind of based on preference. If you're playing Trials, then you'll also want as high intellect as possible so you can get your bubble as soon as possible. In terms of mods, I recommend targeting mods, unflinching mods, dexterity mods, holster mods, recuperation, utility kickstart, and reaper. To make things easier for you, of course, you can also check out the dim link below for the Jude Marches build, which I'm currently using with Void. By the way, if you enjoy my content, I do have a Patreon now, which comes with amazing benefits for members. If you're finding it hard to get your footing in the crucible, then how about weekly one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with me or playing trials or comp with me personally every single week not to mention exclusive access to a vip discord where you'll have direct access to me and other patrons plus you also get a personal shout out in all of my future videos kind of like this as a small content creator i am living lean we're talking ramen is kind of like my staple diet lean so 100 of my patreon fund goes towards helping me put food on the table so i can keep making more videos so if you're interested in taking your crucible experience to the next level while also helping me fend off malnutrition then check out my patreon in the description below once again thanks for watching everyone and i'll see you all in the crucible